Good morning, everybody. Y'all look behind us. We're finally getting the set a little bit together. We're, we're moving along. We ran into some glitches this morning. I went by Garner Ace Hardware yesterday and bought the things I thought I needed. They didn't fit, so I got to go back and change them. So darn it, didn't get it done. But we're working on it. This is our work in progress. This is our nails and our things. And Evelyn, this should look familiar to you. Nail, yeah. Nails and hammers. Yeah. Because you have once again bit the bullet, and y'all are about to do two more houses. And I want you to tell people, when you look at a possible remodel, the most important thing about it is? Well, what we look first is for the major stuff. The major they stuff. They work. So the house well, I'm, we I'm going to tell y'all, we're not going to share these pictures with you, <laughs> but when she sent me some pictures of the house she's about to do, I said, oh, that looks so familiar to me. The floor is on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> the floor is on the ground. And so... She says, well, we'll just go in there and we'll jack it up and we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do this. And it literally was because of years of somebody not taking care of well, the foundation. Yes. Well, the crawl space, uh, the little vents are like closed, completely closed. So how important is it to let ventilation in mm -hmm. under your house? You need to. Because, because it rains and accumulates. Water and gets, it gets in there. It gets hot. It gets it cold. It has to escape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so that was the first red flag. But you went back to this house. Did you make three trips to this house before twice. you finally twice? twice. twice. Boy, she bit the bullet and she yeah. said, "Okay, I'm going to do it." And I said, "Go for it." Yeah. Number one, it has over two acres of land. Yes, the land itself. What, what it has paying for. over two acres of land, and because you and Scotty have the ability to mm -hmm. do what has to be done, now if you had to hire everything done about this house, it wouldn't be doable. No, no, because it wouldn't be doable. You, yeah, you have to, you know, pay contractors and material costs right now. It's starting yeah. to get low, but still yeah. a little. Yeah, you know, yeah. Little and high. speaking of material cost, Evelyn brought some things. I wish y'all could have seen us <laughs> driving up 515 this morning <laughs> in my Lincoln Town car because these two big shutters rode between us and it kind of divided. She was on the right, right side then. of the car. I was on the left side of the car. <laughs> there you go. And so we're working at getting the set done. But again, because the pieces I bought yesterday, I got to go back to Garner Ace Hardware and see if they have a different size because it didn't work and I said it's so funny because I thought well we can get this done in 30 minutes then we show up we can't find the hammer the nails won't go through the wood yeah and the pins won't hold the walls together well it's like, the, the floor of the decoration no flower good. arrangements <laughs> here so thank you to Amanda Ballground Ballground Florist is a local small business I love to support and promote local small businesses. She is an amazing young lady. She is a young widow. Her husband died from cancer just a year or so ago. And um, she has a beautiful little building on Fairview in Ballground. And I took her one of my antique water kettles. And this actually belonged to the Dinsmore family in Ballground. And I got it, took it to them, and um, she made me this amazing arrangement that matches the exact colors I wanted. And it just, it looks like it's not just fall colors, it's summer, spring, it's, it's amazing. She did a great, great job, so yeah. I'm very thankful. And you can't see my pot because I've got my Welcome America sign up there because we are the greatest country in the nation and we are about to hit a day that we all remember um, Evelyn, you lived in New York. Were you anywhere near New York when 9-11 happened? Tell me what that was oh, like. I was freaking out. So first of all, I was working at a deli, and the owner of the deli was a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And he has his um, alarm. Called, alarm in there, and it just went off. And my dad was in New York uh -huh. visiting, and he was going to go to um, New York City. Mm -hmm. And he was taking the train, and I, I freaked out. When we heard oh, yeah. the news, I was like, oh, my God, he's probably in there. Oh, my God. But all this crazy thing happened. Obviously, he didn't have a cell phone, so I can call him. So I was like, well, he did have a cell phone, but it only works in Peru, not here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was freaking out. Um, we all got released to go home. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty scary. Pretty scary. Very scary. Pretty scary. Yeah. Do you know people who lost their life there? No. 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 But it was really... It, it just like when it happens it's just like your skin just like 
yeah. feels weird. Yeah. Well, it, still you, today, yeah. oh, this many years crazy. later, and, and I told you I want Caden to get to come. Mm -hmm. The Ball Ground Historical Society is mm -hmm. going to have a program, and it's featuring not ball ground things, mm -hmm. but the world information. Because the day of 9-11, our friend, um, retired detective Paul Nelson, was part of the Ground Zero team that went in there and cleaned up and worked and, and managed the trauma of that day. And that day today still in America says we were at a probably the worst time in American history because we were attacked by foreign people on American soil, which is something that hasn't happened in a long time, and we hope it never happens again. Mm -hmm. And so it's important when I do this set, I always have the flags up, and now that we're changing the set a little bit, the flags have moved, so I have another flag there now. And I think it's important that we remember we are allowed to come on television and talk about God and talk about love and talk about life and talk about loss because we are in a free America, and we are free because of firefighters, police officers, military. I mean, I love that Georgia has a new tag. Did you see the new yeah. tag, Support Our yeah. Troops? That's and I said, I want one of those tags because it is about saving America from when we, we're looking at losing our freedom because we're not, you know, we're not paying attention to what's going on, and we need to maintain the free free things that people lived and died for. Yeah. And and when you got to America, were you kind of blown away that, oh my gosh, you get this and you get this and you get this and it's a very different lifestyle. It is. It is more safe and you feel more secure. I mean, coming from coming from South America, you feel more secure right. here. Yeah. And now you you left the city of Ackworth <laughs> and moved to the tiny town yeah. of Ballgrim. And I got so tickled. I went to see her fence last night. Yeah. And <laughs> she put up this big wooden fence. And I'm like, uh, why? You're out in the country. <laughs> yeah. I have two dogs and they're so spoiled. They need to be in the fence. Yeah. yeah. But it was so funny. But the greatest thing she's done is she built me a paved driveway. Two. So when I visit, <laughs> two of them. It's when I get to see it. Yeah. And, and you know, you're just you're just falling right into being a Mall Grand resident. Yeah. You tell me it. She love walks it. to town, which is the coolest thing because she lives just past um, Roy Haynes Road, and it's just at the city limit sign. Mm -hmm. So you are right on the city limits, and you walk to town, you take your son to the park, you go to the ice cream shop, and you spend time. Did y'all eat pizza this weekend? No, we went, we went to the Burger, burger Bus, bus again. Because the boys love the Burger <laughs> the, yeah, Bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but it is, you know, America has welcomed people from all countries, all mm -hmm. nationalities. Um, all ages of people are moving into the ball ground area mm -hmm. and I love that we are growing but I also love you know have you ever watched the Andy Griffith show mm -mm. probably not no well Andy Griffith was back in the Mayberry days where you sat on the front porch you talked to your neighbors you strung beans together you did things together all the little old ladies got together and made a quilt they made pickles uh-oh, my mic's falling down on my shirt. Oh, no, it is. I feel it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, there it is. It did fall. But it, there you go. There you go. You but, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. But when we, um, when we look at today, last week I shared vegetables with you mm -hmm. that a neighbor from across the road brought. Yeah, those tomatoes were really good. They were really good. <laughs> and I said, you know, America is not losing what we had. Mm -hmm. We're just adding more and blending together. And, like, you love country cooking, which oh, just, yeah. she does. That's I why do. she moved to Ball Ground to live I near do. me. I love any type of cooking. <laughs> I don't cook. <laughs> but, but you've had my chicken and dumplings. You've had my vegetable beef soup. You've had my Brunswick stew. What did we have the other day at that restaurant? Those uh, Collard little, greens? No, those no. Salmon, salmon patties. Salmon patties. Oh, oh yes, so salmon good. patties. She never yeah. had salmon patties. No, so, so, good. so we are really, um, we are becoming all that America can be by blending everything we have together. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning from you, I think, more than ever to appreciate America. Because when you tell me the things that are happening in your country mm -hmm. and that your mom is still there and, and that her home, you know, the value could be gone and, yeah. and things change. And that's not what America wants, you know. We want everybody to have their home, grow their wealth, 
make their decisions, make their choices, and decide how do I want to live my life, not be told by the government. Well, you, yeah, well, you have to do. And your <laughs> mom is in a situation because of battling cancer that she's there for her treatment, but she would have been better off in the U.S. with treatment. I hope that after she's done with her treatment, she will come, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. See. That would be awesome, and, and sadly, because the government is devaluing so much property, her big, beautiful home will lose so much value, and that's so sad. And so yeah. we, we see that happening around the world. We don't want that to happen in America. Mm -hmm. No, Cuba is like a worst example right now. Like Absolutely, it's, right it's now. so sad. Sad, Yeah, yeah. Sad. And Cuba, I don't, I don't know um, anybody right now who is from Cuba, but we used to have a lot of friends in Orlando that were from Cuba. And the stories they would tell were gut wrenching. I mean, it just heartbreaking. And the mm -hmm. things that they had, the things that and they had to leave. And it's hard to believe, like when they tell you, like, what this happens in this world? You like, yeah, yeah. Now in like the tw you know the twenties, like, yeah, yeah. It does. It does happen. It <laughs> yeah. does happen. And, and there's sad. no control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about your mom being in Peru now? What about groceries and shopping and things like that? Is she able it's, to? Yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, you can go and shop. Um, well, with COVID last year, they have more restrictions, but they have lift all those restrictions now. Um, a lot of people are getting vaccinated there now. They have the vaccine available for everybody, all ages. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, there is no restriction in food, on food yet, but the new government, I think they're trying to do what happens a couple, many years ago where they will supply you for a month mm -hmm. worth of So they'll groceries. basically tell you what you're gonna eat. Well, they, they give you yeah. the stuff, yeah. that what are you gonna eat? And oh that's all you get in for the month. So if you run out or it, it goes bad or something, then I guess you start You're in to trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Well, in America, there used to be mm -hmm. this thing called commodities food. Mm -hmm. And once a month, they would send you a can of chicken, a bag of dried beans, a bag of rice, mm -hmm. uh, a big quarter of cheese, which my grandmother loved, a can of peanut butter, which happened to be the world's worst peanut butter in the world. It was so dry. And um, something else was in that box. But that was what, when poverty hit mm -hmm. and, and during really, really tough times, these commodities food were often all a family had to eat. And so you didn't walk into a grocery store and you didn't buy your own product and you, you didn't. Just to and you, get that. you had to make do with what you had. And I think that was one of my grandmother's favorite sayings. She said, Well, you just got to make do. You just have to make do. And you have to do whatever. And, and I have seen her make fried bread out of flour and water and fry the bread. And that was a meal. And then put <laughs> wow, syrup on yeah. it. Oh, that's the other thing that came in that commodities box. You got a, a jar of white Cairo syrup, mm -hmm. but it was a off brand, but you got white syrup so you could make fried bread. And often that was a whole meal. Wow. Because that's what you had, you know, and that's what you had. And, and I, it's very sad to think about that because that's what people lived on during really rough times and mm -hmm. we don't want to go back to those times you know we don't yeah. want to go back to those times no, so no. but um, we're going to take a commercial break and when we come back I want you to talk about you're going to do two remodels soon mm -hmm. and one is going to be very close to ball ground which is going to be really really cool and we're going to yes. be hands-on with that one and then the other one is in an area that I absolutely love yeah. over near Pine Log which is a really cool area and we're going to talk about when you come shopping in the real estate market and you're looking and you're going, ah, well, this is my budget, but I really wanted more. If all you can afford is this home, like you're going to be buying, mm -hmm. and you do have the ability to remodel, take your time. You can learn to do things on YouTube. I mean, I've seen people go, just ask YouTube. And yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah, you can so so don't be afraid of purchasing something that needs a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let you tell people some of the tricks of the trade, and yeah. she knows every single one of them, I promise you. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether you're swimming in the sea, 
or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. <sighs> Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. ETC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Roll over. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... Her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Okay, have y'all ever been to Hurricane Mills, Tennessee? Well, if you have not, I want to suggest that you go because there is something really, really cool happening in Hurricane Mills. There's gonna be a huge gospel concert around Labor Day weekend. And Hurricane Mills, Tennessee is where Miss Loretta Lynn's home is. And um, since she had her stroke, she hasn't been performing up there. There is gonna be a massive gospel concert there and there's gonna be a bus caravan and a lot of people going. And so we're gonna share some pictures now of our trips to Hurricane Mills. This is, now this is the RV, this is our, the motorhome that burned. Oh my gosh, we drove that up to Hurricane Mills. We had the best time. And boy, you talk about sad. It broke my heart. It caught on fire oh, no. and us in it. And um, yeah, we got out and then dummy Sherry jumped back in to get my paperwork. And Freddie's <laughs> like, don't go back in there. And I said, my log book's in there. He said, good <laughs> gosh, <laughs> it was crazy. And that is, uh, that's Ralph and Gail's RV. And we had the best time. Now this is in Loretta Lynn's daughter. This is Miss Betty's gift shop. Miss Betty has passed away since then. And um, we had the best time up there. We just, we met some of the sweetest people. We did an interview with Sissy and with Betty. We had so much fun. And it is one of those places you need to plan a trip and maybe go on Friday night and stay Friday, Saturday, Sunday and enjoy the gospel music and just have a blast. It was so much fun. And it's located right on the Duck River, which is a beautiful, beautiful area. And if you love Loretta Lynn, you love her music, her daughter's gift shop, I think is still open. I think her daughter, Betty's daughter is running it now. So. So you need to go by and speak to them and visit with them and, and get to know them and just a really, really cool place to be. We had so much fun there and we interviewed Betty and um, just a few years after that she passed away, but she was such a sweet lady. Now that's Loretta's parents. Is that not the sweetest thing? And um, again, all these came out of Betty's gift shop and we just had so much fun and it's called Betty, it's called Betty Lynn's Family and this this is the Duck River as it rose and took over her building. Her building was completely underwater. And it was up to the walls, eight feet up to the walls. 
and uh, she lost a lot of inventory. She lost a in lot of shop? stuff in her shop, oh, in wow. the shop that we just showed you. Yep. Yeah, but in that, it, it's amazing. The Duck River is a mighty, mighty river, and uh, yeah, it was crazy. But we had so much fun up there. We've been there several, 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 several times, <laughs> and always enjoyed it and had a great time, and and just enjoy that good old music. And and this week there's Betty and uh, Fran and Gail, and what a sweet, sweet memory. And Miss Betty was Loretta's oldest daughter and she went to be with the Lord and here Loretta's still here, but her, she's lost two children. So, uh -huh. and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time with her and she's just a sweet, sweet lady. So we had a blast. That's so funny. I Maybe almost wore that shirt today. And you're wearing your sunglasses. <laughs> That's so funny. I almost wore that shirt today. So. Actually, the shirt's in a bag out there in the car. <laughs> that is hysterical. Oh, I, saw that I wore my Loretta Lynn shirt today, so in honor of Miss Loretta Lynn. So, and that's on the property at Betty's Flea Market. And this is at uh, Sissy Lynn's. We did an uh, interview with her, and it's called the Coal Miner's Daughter's Daughter. And you can see that here on ETC. We had a great time with Sissy and interviewed her and talked about her life and and the things that they've gone through and. And of course, this was all before her mom had the massive stroke, and she is now doing so much better, though. And uh, we had a, a great time with Sissy. Sissy has since then, there's Sissy, she has had cancer and has recovered from cancer. So there's been so much happened to the Lynn family, but they still open their beautiful ranch to the public. And it is just a wonderful place to plan a holiday weekend. Labor Day is coming up, and Labor Day is to me the, the best the time to go there. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? <laughs> And uh, she and John traveled and sang, and, and she, uh, she was doing great. And oh, we loved eating at her place. She had some oh, fantastic like food. Yeah, so she made great homemade pimento cheese, and we just, we oh had a blast God, with her. <laughs> it was so good, it was so good. We had so much fun, and uh, it's just, it's sad to look at, you know, the people who are gone now. Betty passed away, her son Jack had passed away. And um, her husband, Do, passed away, so, and she's still here. She survived that massive stroke. And, uh, and it's funny that there's the RV that burned, and it burned, and it burned, and it burned. And we were riding down the road when it burned. So <laughs> it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. But we had so much fun. And I want to encourage you, if you have not been to Hurricane Mills, to see Loretta Lynn's beautiful, beautiful ranch, go make a trip plan a, a daycation, plan a staycation. You can stay on property. They have a beautiful campsite. And uh, if you love motocross, everybody knows about her national motocross race that they have there once a year. And it's, it's just a fantastic place for vacation. So, so make plans to go to Hurricane Mills. And it is one of those places Every time you go, you see something different. And I love being in the museum and seeing how they live. They have all the furniture from their first home when they lived in, um, I think it was Hendersonville, Tennessee. And, and it's just really, really cool to see all the things that Loretta Lynn had. But we had a great time. And that was actually on stage the night that we were there. NBC News was doing a special with Loretta and they were interviewing her. And so it was a really, really special time. And we took Freddie's mom and dad and um, on one trip. They had a great time. It was just a lot of fun and uh, just enjoyed it. The one thing about it is those happen to be the most uncomfortable seats at any yeah, concert you'll ever like. attend. <laughs> they were horrible. <laughs> they were Bring awful. Bring cushions. <laughs> I don't think a cushion would have helped those seats, and it's oh, hot wow. as Hades in there. So, but it's it's a great time and a lot of fun, and uh, that's where I got my Loretta Lynn shirt that I have on today. So, <laughs> yay, 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 yay! And if you haven't been, uh, there's Loretta getting out of her Escalade. See, that's what I want now. I want me a black Escalade. That, and then we could haul those. It would have been easier to haul the shutters. Yes. <laughs> and in my car. And everything so. else. <laughs> So, yay, 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 yay. And uh, there's her son, Ernest Lynn, who he is still performing. Her daughters, Peggy and Patsy, are still performing. They're still doing concerts at the farm, but Loretta hasn't been performing. So I don't know if she's back performing now or not. But um, again, this Labor Day weekend is going to be a fantastic gospel concert with some of the best names in gospel music. And so if you like gospel music, 
You need to make plans to go and take your RV and make plans to stay in the campsite, and uh, it'd be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. There's Miss Peggy and Patsy, and uh, check out Peggy and Patsy Lynn on YouTube because they do a song called "Her Name Is Sarah," mm -hmm. and it is so precious, and it is it will it's heartwarming and it's so sweet, and uh, they do that, and then they do another one that um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's a cool one that reminds them of when their mama would drop them off at school because their mom would drop them off at school and she'd have to go out on the road for days and days and days. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it's really a cool song. So check out The Lens if you haven't listened to them. They're fantastic. And uh, they are her twin daughters. They were kind of surprises. <laughs> she thought she was through having kids yeah. and then here come the twins. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so there you go. There you go, but if you haven't been to Hurricane Mills, please make plans to do it. And uh, Labor Day weekend is the best time to do it because it has um, everything going on, a lot to see. And on the way up there, you need to stop in Bell Buckle, Tennessee because they make the best white creamed corn mm -hmm. and all kinds of good veggies. And it's the Bell Buckle Cafe. So, mm -hmm. so get out and uh, take a trip. And, and get to know the beautiful mountains from Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama. Just, you know, don't sit at home. Even though gas prices, let me tell you, it cost me $46 to, to fill, fill up, up yesterday. Gosh. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. I was filling up for $29. It was $46. I know. I may not go anywhere. <laughs> I you like to drive, so yeah, you cannot <laughs> stay still. <laughs> I feel like twice a week. I was like, holy cow. Scotty always says that. She's burning gas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she yes, is. She is. <laughs> That's what she does. Yes, yes, yes. Now this, y'all, this is inside the RV. I was terrified. You see how wide this road is? The RV was wider than the road was. Mini Pearl. And we were on all these little bitty pig trail roads in this big RV. Yeah, yeah. This is the Duck River, and this is the river that lost, you know, it, it left its banks and it destroyed a lot of property. So mm -mm. they flood in the spring, and it was a bad, bad flood that year. So, but get oh, out. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Yep, Isn't that cool, cool bridge. So get out and get to know the beautiful hills and the mountains everywhere that we serve, you know, from Tennessee, Georgia. There are so many things that we don't take the time to see. We don't take the time to look at. We don't take the time to spend time doing things. And it's time we did. It's time we did. So get out and go and enjoy. And look at that. You see how, you see the how little that, yeah, and you see how little that road is? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and we're in a big RV, so it was wild. And I can say Freddie Brackett can park anything and drive anything, because I would have wrecked. I mean, I would have just panicked and said, I would have gotten out from the stairwells wheels that I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But he did it. So, yeah, we, get went out of the some, car, we went on some pig trails in an RV. So <laughs> it's crazy. But get out and enjoy. Just get out and enjoy. And enjoy America. You know, go to places, you, you know, two hours from home, you can see all kinds of things. And I think that's important that we do that. I think that we get out and say, Travel the roads of America and learn a little bit more about it. And this is coming into Gunnersville, Alabama. And uh, we're back in Alabama, so we're back to where we're talking like country folk again. You know? <laughs> and, and there's Alabama, Fort Payne. So get to know all these beautiful, beautiful areas. And just a day, one day, if you start at like DeSoto State Park, Little River Canyon, beautiful, beautiful DeSoto Falls. If you want to get out and go to Alabama for your first trip and then go up to Tennessee mm -hmm. for the next day, just do any of all, all of that and see things that are two or three hours from home. It just makes sense. So that could be y'all's next move, Evelyn. Y'all could get an RV. No, no. <laughs> I am not you in that stage time. yet. <laughs> you don't have time. No. And this is coming out of Fort Payne, Alabama. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very close to our cabin over on the lake and uh, just a, a beautiful area. And this is literally an hour and a half from where we're sitting here in LJ. Is that Little River? Yeah, it is, okay. it is, yeah. That's exactly where we're sitting, so there you go. Okay, I hope I've enticed you. I hope that you will fill up your gas tank with this outrageously expensive mm. gas. Yeah. I hope that you'll go somewhere. So, okay, when you, you're starting on these two remodels, 
And the two remodels are going to be very different because one is to resell, one is for you. You're not sure yeah. what you're going to yeah. do with it yet. Okay, from the bottom of the floor, that one you literally have to go down and the, the floor joists is everything is bad. So we're going to try to save it and if we can. If you can. Yeah, I think it is manageable, mm -hmm. but it's not. I got a deck. You got, <laughs> I got a deck. I got a she just paid a lot of money for a deck. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. A deck and, and two the acres. The deck is huge and is in great condition. <laughs> and with the prices of lumber, you have to look money. Yeah. You know, you have so to look you guys at it. That's ten thousand dollars. <laughs> That's five thousand dollars there. Yeah. It's going to be crazy, yeah. and I can't wait. I've seen the before pictures. We're not going to show you the before pictures yet because they're pretty rough. <laughs> but when you when you do this, and it's a Sears and Roebuck house mm -hmm. from the, was it the 20s? No, it's... Or the 40s? That house in white mm -hmm. is 75. Okay. Yeah, it's built in 75. Um, the land is beautiful, though. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I just got sold on the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's how, you, when you're looking at real mm -hmm. estate, you have to decide where's yeah. the value. Yeah. Where is the value? Yes. Is it on the land because it's exactly the land mm -hmm. I want? Yeah. Or is it in the house because I have to have four bedrooms and three baths because mm -hmm. of the number of kids I have? Yeah. So you have to decide what works for you. Yeah, even if we cannot save the house, which I think we can, mm -hmm. um, we have two point, almost 2.5 acres. Right. And it already has utilities, already have a sective, already mm -hmm. have everything. So and it has a deck. She keeps reminding me it has a deck. Yeah, it has a deck <laughs> and then also has a little gate. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty. I like the property. So it is pretty. Even if we she don't was do sending me pictures, and yeah. she was saying, "I love this property. I love this yeah. property." And I, I keep said, asking Scotty, and I said, "You need to give me some like work confirmation so we can like put an offer on it." And he was like, "Okay, well, <laughs> you're gonna do it anyways." <laughs> so he's like, "I will try my best." And I yeah. said, "Yes, you can." And then yeah. I called Sherry, and he's like, "Yeah, you should do it." Yeah, I said, "Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it." Once I saw the land, yeah. I was like, "That yeah. land is pretty. Yeah, yeah it really is. pretty." And it's in a good area because it's not far from Calhoun. It's not far from Dalton. No. It's not far from Chatsworth. Mm -hmm. So, no. you know, a lot of working people over in that community. So yeah. you'll have a market for either rental or yeah. for selling the house. So. Yeah. And that is that was a. Um, <coughs> piece of property it was a small cabin with five acres it just sold for like 335 right so I was like okay you know try it have value. yeah yeah try yeah. it and that's what it's all about now the ball ground house is a whole different story because mm -hmm. ball ground is the hottest market in North Georgia yes. it's just crazy and I put out a feeler today I need 10 to 20 <laughs> acres now this is what I need y'all I need the perfect piece of land, 10 to 20 acres, but it has to be within five miles of ball ground. And it has to be in a good area for building a beautiful estate home. And I'm talking about, you know, privacy off the road where we can do a gated entry. It has to be a very, very select piece of property. And if you're sitting out there watching and you happen to have, Cornage Road is kind of like my favorite area. I love going down Howell Bridge. I love going over to Hornage. I love all that area through Land Road. It's absolutely gorgeous. But the proximity, we have to be five miles from town because the buyer has specific needs and he wants to be five miles from town. So, <laughs> so you find what your buyer is looking for. Yeah. And it's not easy, is it? It is not easy. It is not easy. No. And sometimes you're just like, holy cow, how am I going to do this? Yeah. And then the right property comes along. Do you know what we need again? What? We need four more properties just like we sold on Flat Bottom. Oh my God, that property was gorgeous. We need four yeah. more properties just like we sold on Flat Bottom. We put it on the market. We had an offer. The next day we had an offer. It sold for 10000 over asking price. Mm -hmm. And immediately the people are tickled to death and thrilled to be there. It is tough. But if you're sitting on land in ball ground and you have something that we could, maybe if you have 65, 70 acres and you want to cut Let off it. 10 acres, yeah. you want to cut off 30 acres. We have buyers right looking for all of that. Yeah, and I, and I tell people, they're like, well, should I hold on? And I said, why <laughs> waiting on a collapse and we lose everything? No, yeah. you should capitalize on it right now, now yeah. right now. So, mm -hmm. so we tell everybody that. Don't price your property if you're not ready to move because you will be moving, so. Yeah. Now the little house in Ball Ground is on a very heavily traveled road with a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. 
And that was my big concern when I looked at it. You sent me to look at it, and I said, I love the opportunity, I love the idea, I think it's great, but the traffic. The traffic, yeah. I almost bought something on that road, and because of the traffic, I said, I'm afraid I'd get killed here because I come and go all the time. I'm not somebody who goes to work, goes home. I come and go all the time. No. So I didn't like the In idea. And out, yeah. Some people, the traffic Some won't bother them. Yeah. yeah, it won't yeah. bother them. And there's yeah. a buyer for everything. Everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody has their own preference. Yeah. And they want this, and they don't care if they have a long driveway, short driveway, one car garage, no car garage, a carport. There's somebody there, for everything. Yeah, for yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Well, we have a meeting on Thursday, and we're excited because we are going to be marketing um, 40 new homes in Jasper. It's going to be very interesting because we started this process a long time ago. I was younger <laughs> when we started this process. It's taken a long time to get where we are, but we're going to be breaking ground very soon and going to be building some beautiful homes. And I've been looking at plans, showing you plans, sharing plans. We're trying to decide on plans. And the important things are open family living. Yeah. Always open family open living. Concept, yeah. Some people don't care about a carport. Some people don't care about a garage. I do. I'd yeah. rather have a garage than a big house. Because I for had storage. a garage for 13 years. <laughs> for storage. <laughs> She's saying <laughs> Not a garage. Yeah. <laughs> garage, that storage. I like, stuff. I like yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, so we know that we're going to have a market for any and everything, mm -hmm. but we have to choose the plans wisely. We have to stay on budget because we've set a goal for like three nineteen to four twenty five will be the price range, and it's going to be seven tenths of a mile from downtown Jasper, yep. which is pretty awesome that is pretty awesome and so um, we will have ETC services so you will have ETC TV Wi-Fi um, you will have their um, security too, uh, the security way. yeah we have security and then you also have that landline some people don't want to let go of a landline and because of 911 yeah. and I think a lot of older people that's important to them you know they want that 911 and a lot of people I hate to say this because I'm getting there they wear those necklaces that need a, button, a yeah. phone to uh, to hook to it. So, so there you go. But we're going to have ETC services, um, and that means that you will have that great Wi-Fi. If you're working from home, then you can work from home, and you can know that you're going to have what you need. You know, you're going to have what you need. And I think that's important. Yeah. I think it's important because today. I'm going to run home and do some work at home on my laptop. You'll probably do stuff on your laptop from home. Oh, yeah. It's important that you have good Wi-Fi. Yeah, and I think kids, that's... when they come from school, they have to do something on their computer, too. So exactly. And you need internet. You need <laughs> internet. Yeah, you need internet. Now, has Caden had any ideas about, are kids at school worried about COVID now? Are they stressing? How, what do you think about this? Caden is really cautious when we send them back to face to face in Cobb County. Mm -hmm. He was excited, but he will wear his mask. Like literally, he will be at home for like more than 30 minutes and I'll say, Kaden, do you know you're still wearing your mask? <laughs> oh yeah, so he will remove it. Yeah. So on the first day of school, well, first of all, I told you when we went to the open house, it Too was Too many just, people. Oh yeah, yes. I was having an anxiety attack. I told yeah. Scotty and I was like, we need to go. Yeah. I yeah. was like, there was way too many people, too close, and, and open houses for parents, not to bring your neighbor, your daughter, your kids, your friends, everybody. So we left. He knew where to go. Mm -hmm. And so we left. And then Monday comes, and I send them with the mask. I was like, here's your mask in case you need it. Uh, so he wore it, but, and then he was like, nobody was wearing it, so I didn't, I didn't wear it. Uh, I was like, okay. Um, I think there was one more thing kid in the bus mm -hmm. that he has to wear it because he has some kitten issues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so his, I talked to and there are always people yeah, with compromised yeah. situations so, yeah. you know like you have to understand and I told Kate and I say if you feel comfortable wearing the mask just wear it don't feel like people are gonna bully you or mm -hmm. anything if they do you tell me mm -hmm. but he was like no I think I'm I feel safe like mm -hmm. not wearing it for now mm -hmm. but we'll see I mean mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know. And um, it, you know, we've done social distancing, and, yeah. and and as a hugger, I don't hug anymore, and it's mm -hmm. kind of weird to me because I don't hug anymore. <laughs> you like? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hey y'all, but but um, we, you know, our office has every wipe in the world. We have gloves, we have spray, we have mm -hmm. anything uh, bacterial, da 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 da. So 
We're being cautious, but mm -hmm. we're not stopping living our lives. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that's the most important thing because you and I are both COVID survivors. Mm -hmm. We both struggled with massive headaches. We both had a lot of the same symptoms, but we came out of it and thank God yes. for that. Thank God for that. We still have antibodies and um, I'm very thankful to have made it through that. I don't want to do it again. I, I, I hope I never have to do it again. But we also know people who have passed away from it. Oh, yeah. and, and we know people in all age brackets who passed away from it. So it is nothing to play with, but I don't want to live in fear either. No. You know, I want yeah. to live my life and, and to be sociable, and but the to other be thing in a distance. Too, like, I think it, it bothers me is that people think, oh, I had the vaccine, so you are the reason that we still get in, you know, uh, COVID because you haven't get the vaccine yet. And I say, this is a free country, you do what you you think it is right. convenient for you right what works will, for you yeah. yeah yeah so i i have seen a lot of people talking about like oh yeah you know like people are vaccinated is the one that is continue to have is what we continue to have all these issues we don't know this is a new virus right we don't know right you're not smart enough because you got the vaccine right sorry right yeah we <laughs> don't know, know. No, we, we don't, don't know. know yeah and and i know that i am now you know still when we show houses we wipe things yeah. down and we're cautious yeah. and, and we're respectful yeah. yeah yeah i think common sense. sense plays into it we're respectful mm -hmm. and it's so weird i keep wipes in my car and i keep gloves in my car and i keep whatever i need mm -hmm. and you just you be respectful mm -hmm. exactly. and as showing people's homes um i have one lady who insisted on being there every time we would show and i was like i wish you weren't you know because <clears throat> you just want to you want people to feel comfortable and if the owner is sitting there, you, you, know, you feel like you need to rush. You, yeah, yeah. You, number one, you feel like you need to rush. And so I just have now, I'd say, well, why don't you just step out on the porch and just sit on the porch and get some fresh air while we mm -hmm. view the house. And so we are cautious and we do, I, I even fixed this little basket was full of spray Wipes. and wipe and stuff when I had a house listed up here at Kusawati. And by the door it said, please show safely. Mm -hmm. And so that's what realtors are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to, we're showing, selling, and marketing your homes, but we're doing it safely. And I think that's important. So, exactly. so okay, I've got something that I want the guys, have y'all got the uh, DVD? Uh, okay, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna share a little something for y'all, purely because we're gonna, uh, we have a little time frame. we need to do something. So um, we're gonna share something with y'all and it happened. I think this one is at the Woodbridge Inn. And it is my dear friend, Regina Camp, who celebrated a birthday last year. She was with me and my dear friend, Charlene, my co-host was there and Danny Jones, who is the producer of Singing News Magazine was there. And we had such a great time. So I think it's important as we celebrate Regina's birthday that we share a little bit of a day that she and I spend at the Woodbridge Inn. Okay, for you. Welcome to fall, y'all. Heart of the home. Ooh, it's fall. And I, you know what? In the fall, I go to work for the DOT. I'm their best road packer around. I get out and road pack for miles and miles and miles trying to find you some of the best restaurants in the world because my favorite thing to make for dinner in the winter and in the fall are reservations, reservations anywhere. Now I'm at Wolf Creek Canyon in LJ with Gary Davis, the owner. I don't have to have reservations to come here, do I? No. Nope. I hit the door and... Okay, we blew it, y'all. That is so funny. That is Gary Davis who runs, uh, he still has a restaurant here in town. That's not where his location was and that now we got the Woodbridge Inn. Okay, that is so funny. I happened to bring in <laughs> some programs for Tim to edit and to use on ETC and I want to remind y'all that last night at 9 o'clock we aired a program that was done over at Charlene's house and it had Courtney and it had, um, who else was on there? Courtney and da, 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 Cheyenne. And we did blueberry and strawberry cobblers. And you have got to watch that again because these are the simplest, easiest ways to make cobblers. And we used blueberries and strawberries. And this was one that I'd forgotten all about doing. And so Tim found it and all the stuff that I'd given him and aired it. And it's a fantastic program with some great, great recipes in it. So here we go. Yeah, now we're going to the Woodbridge <laughs> Inn, and you're going to get to see my dear friend Regina Camp, who just celebrated a birthday. 
favorite thing to make for dinner? Reservations. <laughs> Reservations at a great restaurant. And we are in a wonderful, wonderful old inn in Jasper, Georgia. We are at the Woodbridge Inn. Now, the Woodbridge Inn is two minutes from your office and right. about four minutes from my office and maybe five minutes from your house. Close as I want it to be. Regina, we have had so many wonderful meals here. We've had so many wonderful memories here. My cooking for the public started here 38 years ago. I got a job when I left Atlanta. I was the baker here. And at that time, my last name was Baker. Well, I worked for Willie, who was a Czechoslovakian. He had gotten this, maybe as a joke for a wedding present. His mother-in-law gave him a job. She bought him the Woodbridge Inn. They opened the doors, had no idea what they were doing. They hired me to bake. I had no idea what I was doing, but together we kind of muffled through it. <laughs> and I was here through four owners. I was here through um, trying times. There were some trying times, and now 30 years of success. 30 years. Joe and Brenda have been here. There's a little German flair going on here now, and there's a home time flair. You know, that's the thing. This, this is. When you get here, you feel like, I've arrived, I'm at home. And that's the cool thing about it. Now, we know a gentleman, when he comes here, rather than staying in the lodge, where does he choose to stay? He chooses to stay upstairs because he says it's it's his home, away from home. And if he can't sleep in his own bed, he just soon sleep in this one. Right. <laughs> well, when we brought Danny over for this morning show, we should have told y'all to come last night because there's a deal going on here for $50. You could have come over and spent the night and hung out, and we could have brought you here to dinner last night. There's a great menu going on, and with Valentine's Day coming on, now does Charles take you out for Valentine's Day? He usually does. He usually does. And I love to come here. What do I have? Flounder. Always. Always. You know. And your spinach salad. And my spinach salad. My spinach salad and lemon pie. Mm -hmm. The best. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Life is short. Eat dessert, dessert first. first. <laughs> yes. We will be having some of that dessert today. Now, Danny, have you ever been to the Woodbridge Inn before this we brought is my you first today? Time. First time. Well. It is a place with such a history. Regina, how many years was it the Lenning Hotel? My goodness, probably 40 years at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. At least, maybe And did they longer. have kind of a family style fair there? They then? did, especially on Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially on Sunday. I remember it as being a hotel in addition to the restaurant where we would come and, you know how back then they didn't have photography studios. Olin Mills would come here mm -hmm. in Chattanooga mm -hmm. and we would come as children and have our pictures made here, you know, wow. buy a coupon or something. And, uh -huh. we just got and the walls are covered with, with tributes to people who Absolutely. were here early. And, and there are some old photos of the building. Now the building has not changed greatly. The outside has. <coughs> Remember it had the old, what do you call that paper? I don't siding, know. it was some kind of siding I'm on it. i young for that. I, I know it. You are the baby. Don't the remind baby me. The table. She reminds me of that every morning when I show up worried about my old wrinkles. I'm not as bad as Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But this has been part of Jasper history. I used to cross that bridge in a 66 Chevelle. Well, right now the bridge is under repair, and it's been under repair. It's actually been closed, what, about six months? Uh, yes, yeah, since well before the uh, Marble Festival, mm -hmm. I think they closed it, and yeah. that was in early October, so right. yeah, it's going on. And when months. I told you to meet me at the Wood Bridge, did you think, is that goofy lady, did she think I'm going to jump across that bridge? Well, since I've got to know you, I knew to expect anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just follow the smell of the restaurant. Uh -huh, that's right, that's right. And one of the things you will always smell here is good soup and great desserts. Now, years ago on Sunday afternoon, you might smell Brenda's mom coming up the... Oh, wonderful. She would drive from Cannon, Georgia, with this homemade pound cake. Now, nothing is better than a homemade pound cake <coughs> unless we talk about Doreen Lee's chocolate cinnamon cake. That's a recipe we're going to share today. We went through the archives last Saturday. I spent, <coughs> I spent all day Saturday looking at old shows and choosing recipes that I started with that I learned here. And we have chosen chocolate cinnamon cake. It is lethally sweetening. <laughs> it is very chocolate. And I think I made a statement. It's as rich as a man with a really good 401k today. <laughs> you do not want a man with a 401k. You want one with about 600 acres of land in South Georgia? Easily. Easily. <laughs> That's right. Because the 401k is gone. It's out of here. Right now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to a segment that was shot several years ago. It is Angela and I doing 
chocolate cinnamon cake. Now we want to show you a photo. When I started working here, Angela was two. Angela is now, <coughs> how old is Angela now? <laughs> we don't talk about that. She isn't two anymore. She says she's 29, but Danny, how old are you? Uh, 39 plus tax. 39 plus tax, okay. <laughs> I think Angela might be related to you. When we come back, we're going to talk about the singing news and what you do to promote gospel music, what you and I are doing to promote gospel music, and what we all need to do to promote local businesses. The Woodbridge Inn being one of those businesses that is, like everybody else, these are tough times, guys, but we've got some deals for you. We have some great rates on staying here. We have some great menu items we're going to share with you. So sit back now, get your pencil and paper, because you're going to learn how to make a lethal chocolate cinnamon cake. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, I promised you a rich, rich recipe, mm -hmm. and wow, is it rich. I've been eating this cake for about 30-something years. You were two years old. No, because uh -oh. I'm only 29. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> well, okay. My daughter, Angela, was only two the first time I had this cake. Gosh, does that make me or you old? Neither one. Okay, neither one. It is a rich recipe. This was submitted by Doreen Lee. She's from Kankakee, Illinois. And she got the recipe from, I think, a junior league cookbook there many, many years ago. Rich, rich, rich chocolate cinnamon cake. Rich and good. Mm -hmm. Now, I made my first one last week. And Angela's going to go over the ingredients for you. There are two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, one cup of butter, a fourth cup baking cocoa, one cup water, a half a cup of buttermilk, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two eggs, and one teaspoon of salt. Now, if y'all have been tuning in to Heart of the Home, we all know I'm not much at measuring, but I have got the most precious measuring spoon that I got as a gift today from Corks and Crumbs in Ella J. My little buddy, Lori, brought it to me. Angela, what's on there? A rooster! Chickens, a and they're chicken. so cute! They are precious. I love this. And mm -hmm. I'm going to have to visit that shop. Now, we're going to add, we are actually measuring, aren't we? <gasps> we measured today. We I don't never do that. <laughs> well, we're measuring today because this cake is pretty precise, and mm -hmm. we need to measure this. Okay, Angela, we have combined two cups of flour, two cups of sugar. We sifted that, and now we're melting our cup of butter with our cocoa and our water. We're going to let that melt good, and then we're going to pour it over the dry ingredients, and then we're going to add our buttermilk and our cinnamon and our vanilla and our eggs. And our soda. Tiny bit of soda, tiny bit of salt. It's going to be ready to bake. This is a simple recipe using plain flour. And the chocolate's already smelling so oh, good. Oh, man, this chocolate smells great. This is what makes this cake rich. Mm -hmm. Butter and chocolate. Kind of like a man mm -hmm. with a 401k and a state retirement. Now, and that's an out-of-town hobby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's rich. That's rich. <laughs> now, this is, what, a 10 by 15 pan? Sure. It's a little bit larger than normal, and that's the size pan that this recipe requires. It's going to be in the oven for 30 minutes or until a toothpick put in comes out dry. Do not overbake it. My first one, I did overbake it, so watch it closely. Now, this rich, rich recipe for our icing is, Angela, the amount of butter is one cup of butter, one fourth, bag of 10x sugar. Fourth and, cup of cocoa. Fourth cup of cocoa. Um, six tablespoons of milk. A six. teaspoon of vanilla. That's it. Bullet and saucepan. That is it, guys, and it is so simple, and you pour it over the cake hot. Man, I think this deserves the rich and powerful. Ooh, man, it's good. These walnuts came from Harris Farm, and uh, they're big chunks of walnuts. You can use pecans, you can use walnuts. I just happen to have a ton of walnuts we picked up out on the ground mm. and shelled. Oh, wow. Yummy. Wow, yummy. Just a hint of cinnamon and a whole lot of rich chocolate. And what do you think of that? I think that looks yummy enough to eat. I Let's think that looks in. yummy. I think Doreen had a good idea. This was a great recipe, guys. Angela, I promised you this was going to be rich and hot. Oh, well, Doreen! Doreen! Hey. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm from college. I Just smelled this all the way in Atlanta, so I had to come up. Uh-huh, uh -huh. okay, good idea. 
Tori, there you go, honey. The third generation gets the cake. Three generations, a great recipe. Remember, submit us your family recipes to Heart of the Home at etcmail.com. See you every Thursday night, guys. Bye-bye. It's great Bye. to have you home, sweetheart. You got me looking on the bright side of the night. You got me looking on the bright side of the night.